guys, it's Hath. I am back again. This is going to be a new project, but this is going to be one that's a little bit different. I was watching uh, Jessica from Beauty and Baseball, and she had started a new uh, project pan tag, which was the Disney princesses. Um, well, it's not really a tag, it's a project. Go figure. Anyway, um, and they had 14 Disney princesses and each had been assigned two colours and they were going to pick five to seven products to use between now and I believe it's, I think it was May 10th to August 10th. Um, I think that was it. it was, it's a four month project. Um, but I have other projects on the go and I just started a new one so it was like hmm, I really like the idea uh, but I wasn't wasn't sure where I could take on another project of like makeup or beauty type stuff so then I was watching Rebecca at um, panning and stuff and she's got more projects on the go than I have um, and what she had decided to do was do a books to be read version of it following the same kind of guideline and then um, Zelma from Zelma and Lisa uh, she jumped in on that as well and I thought that's a really good way and I, I really need to I have a bookcase next to my bed which is pretty much packed with um, books that I need to read they're all you know real books plus I have probably 30 books or something on my phone that um, I have got I've like downloaded for free um, so I thought this was a way of encouraging myself to read some of these books um, I'm going to do it a bit more like Zelma's where I will um, pick new books as I finish up books um, sort of to keep a bit more motivated basically so um yeah so i have seven books here at the moment um we will see how we go um i'm one of those people i can read a book pretty fast uh, i have a habit of getting lost in books and then forgetting what time it is and not getting enough sleep because i'm too busy reading um like a uh, most mills and boon type books is a couple of hours read for me um i haven't actually put any of those in to this I've put in a couple of books that are challenging to me because they're not my normal genre of reading. I prefer romance and uh, fantasy type books. Um, I and uh, <laughs> unlike Zelma, I don't read clean fiction. I don't read not clean fiction. Be that as it may. Anyway, so there are fourteen princesses, so the possibility of twenty-eight different color choices to be made um, this time around I didn't draw any number twice but um, if I did I would just pick the color I haven't picked yet unless I keep on picking the same numbers and then I'll just keep on going um, so <laughs> the if I can find my piece of paper which is underneath the stack of books so I used a random number generator on my phone um, it's just an app on my phone it actually allows you, instead of having to pick each one individually, you can ask it to pick you a set number of numbers, so you get them all in one, which is actually really, really good. Um, very useful, very useful. And you can eliminate numbers, so if you didn't want to draw the same numbers again, like say you'd use both of one colour, you could actually get it to eliminate that colour and not pick that colour. Really interesting app. Anyway. So the first number I drew was number 12, which is Rapunzel, which is purple or lavender. And for that one, I picked this book from uh, Fleur MacDonald, and it's called Purple Roads. Um, and on the back, this is the blurb that it says... Anna and Matt Butler were childhood sweethearts with a dream of owning their own land, a dream they achieved through hard work and determination. But as the seasons conspire against them and Matt is involved in a terrible accident, the couple face financial ruin and the loss of their fan farm. Bleh. As Anna and Matt fight for everything they hold dear, they suddenly find themselves caught up in events much bigger and more dangerous than they could ever have imagined. 
Purple Roads is a story about maintaining faith in yourself, staying true to your ideals, and most of all, the belief that some things are worth fighting for. So, um, Flo MacDonald is an Australian author who lives in Western Australia. So, that's my one for Purple. Uh, the number I picked next was number four, which is a bell, which was either yellow or white. For that, I picked Unseen Academicals by Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett is one of my favourite authors ever, or should I say the late Sir Terry Pratchett, because he has passed away now. Um, I have a lot of his books, <laughs> and I have a few I haven't read yet, so um, I picked the yellow for it because his name's in yellow, the back of it's yellow, there's yellow all over this one. Um, the blurb on the back reads, football has come to the ancient city of Ankh Morpork. Not the old fashioned grubby pushing and shoving, but the new fast football with pointy hats for goalposts and balls that are glow glowing, not glowing, glowing. And now the wizards of Unseen University must, must win a football match without using magic, so they're going to try everything else. The big match draws in an urchin with a gift for kicking a tin can, a maker of jolly good pies and a dim but beautiful young woman who might turn out to be the greatest fashion model ever, and the mysterious Mr. Nutt. Nobody knows much about Mr. Nutt, not even Mr. Nutt. As the match approaches, four lives are changed forever, because the thing about football, the important thing about football, is that it's not just about football. I love the way Terry Pratchett writes. He's hilarious. Um, yeah, so that's that one. Looking forward to reading that one. Uh, number 11 was the next one I picked, which is Pocahontas. Um, the colours for that were tan and turquoise. And... Of course, that's the one that's on the bottom of my pile, because it's huge. Uh, so I picked... Sunset Ridge from Nicole Alexander. Uh, yeah, Nicole Alexander. Um, I think. Yeah, she's an Australian author too. Um, so this is kind of like tan in colour, hence why I picked it. Uh, so the blurb for this one says. Although Madeline has grown up in the shadow of her grandfather, the renowned artist David Harrow, she knows little about him, for David died long before she was born and his paintings were sold off to save the family property Sunset Ridge. Now, decades on, with the possibility of a retrospective of David's work, Madeline races to unravel the remarkable life of her grandfather, a veteran of the Great War, unaware that his legacy extends far beyond the boundaries of the family property. It is 1916, and as Europe descends further into bloodshed, three Queensland brothers, Thaddeus, Luther and David Harrow, choose freedom over their restricted lives at Sunset Ridge, a freedom that sees them bound for the hell of the trenches. With the world on fire around them, the brothers bear witness to both remarkable courage and shocking carnage, but they also come to understand the healing power of love, love for their comrades, love for each other, and love for the heart, young, highly spirited girl they left back home. This is a story of bravery and misadventure, of intolerance and friendship. Most of all, it is a story of three young men who went to war and fought for love. The kind of thing I read a lot is like Australian fiction, like that kind of thing. So <laughs> it's a good reason to get into it. Uh, number six was uh, number six is the next one I picked, which is Elsa, which was ice blue or black, and. I picked uh, Poppy's Dilemma by Carly Lane, because you know, kind of icy blue. Uh, this one says, Poppy Abbott seems to have it all, bright, successful and attractive. She lives in a beautiful apartment with sweeping views of Sydney, another Australian novel. However, since the recent death of her beloved grandmother, Poppy's been struggling to come to terms with her grief. Feeling nostalgic one evening, Poppy decides to sort through her grandmother's belongings. She's hardly started when she comes across an old di diary with the name Maggie Abbott written in the front. It is not long before she is drawn into Maggie's life and her fear for her soldier boyfriend during the First World War. As her interest in Maggie's diary intensifies, Maggie decides to spend some time in the country. Away from the city, Poppy begins to wonder if the things she'd always valued are what she really wants out of life. And then love intervenes. So, romance and intrigue and shit. Yeah. Pretty much the stuff I read. Uh, 
But not always, because it can be a little heavy going, and when bad stuff happens, I always get like super upset. So, um, the next one I picked was number seven, which was jasmine, which is either turquoise or gold. And for that, I picked golden earrings by Belinda Alexandra. Um, I've read a couple of her other books, and there was one that I, I started reading, I think it's Sapphire Skies, which I kind of got a bit stuck with, um, found a little bit harder to read, but this one, I started reading this one last night, and um, I read that much last night. <laughs> uh, I didn't kind of want to put it down, but I got to the end of uh, part one, so I kind of like, no, you need to put it down. <laughs> the blurb on the back of this is... You who judge me come, let me tell you a story. Paloma Baton is the granddaughter of Spanish refugees who fled Barcelona after the Civil War. A disciplined student with the school of the Paris Opera Ballet, Paloma lets little get in the way of her career until she receives a mysterious pair of golden earrings. She begins exploring her own Spanish heritage and becomes fascinated by La Russa, a woman who rose from poverty to become one of the great flamenco dancers of modern times before committing suicide. As Paloma begins to unravel the secrets of the past, she discovers more than one person who had reason for wanting La Russa dead, including Paloma's own grandmother. Golden Earrings is a story that moves between two great cities, Barcelona before the Civil War and Paris in the 1970s. It is a story of two women and the extremes to which they are willing to go for love. It is a story of great passions and great betrayals, where nothing is quite as it seems. So far, super duper interesting. Um, so this will be the first one that I finish because it's the first one I picked up to read. The last two are the ones that are going to be a little bit more challenging because they're not generally the types of books that I read, but what is a project with that challenge? Uh, so 10 was the number I picked next, which was a Milan, which was green or blue, and for that I picked... This book by Michael Connolly, which is called The Gods of Guilt. It is a Lincoln Lawyer novel. Um, I don't generally read crime fiction. However, this kind of has a uh, bluey green up there. Uh, this on the back says, Mickey Haller gets the text, call me ASAP 187, and the California Penal Code for Murder immediately gets his attention. Murder cases have the highest stakes and the biggest paydays, and they always mean Haller has to be on top of his game. When Mickey learns that the victim was his own former client, a prostitute he thought he had rescued and put on the straight and narrow path, he knows he is on the hook for this one. He soon finds out that she was back in LA and back in the life. Far from saving her, Mickey may have been the one to put her in danger. Haunted by the ghosts of his past, Mickey must work tirelessly and bring all his skill to bear in a case that could mean his ultimate redemption or proof of his ultimate guilt. That sounds like an interesting read. <laughs> Definitely not the type of stuff I generally read. And the last one I picked was number 14, which was Pale Green or Cream for Tiana. So I picked this book, which my partner actually read and recommended that I read. It's called The Timekeeper by Mitch Albom. Um, apparently it's supposed to be really interesting. It's um, This is the guy who wrote Tuesdays with Maury and uh, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. So on the back it says, man alone measures time, man alone chimes the hour, and because of this man alone suffers a paralyzing fear that no other creature endure, endures, a fear of time running out. So um, I've been meaning to read this one for about four years or something now, so uh, this year is the year. So those are the seven books that I have picked according to B Disney Princesses. Um, we're going to update monthly, so um, I'm going to try and keep sort of seven books on the go. Because for me, seven books would probably be a month. <laughs> Could be a week if I do really well, but um, yeah. So I will link uh, Jessica down below and Rebecca and Zelma and any of the other people I know who are actually doing like the makeup version of it if you want to like see that one as well it's an interesting project just got time to jump in on it because it is a four month long project 
Um, yeah, so that is it for this video. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there. Leave me a thumbs up if you like these project type videos. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.